litany of gratitude after the COVID pandemic. Let us approach the Lord who makes all things new for all the blessings and graces we received during the COVID pandemic. After every petition, let us say together, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. For reminding us of the fragility of life, shielding us when no one else dared to shelter us, and opening our minds to what is really essential, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God for allowing us to connect with one another with faith and love despite the isolation that sickness had imposed on us. Let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God for the heroic kindness of those who provided us with scientific, social, and spiritual help when doing so was both risky and life-threatening for them. Let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God for the gift of newly discovered medicines and vaccines to combat the virus and the wonder of natural immunity, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the gift of assuring presence when we were anxious and distressed, depressed and lonely and impatient during the pandemic, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, no thought of ours is unknown to you. No tear we shed is unimportant to you. No joy we celebrate is alien to you. You entered our world of sickness, suffering, and death, and you know the fears we face. Accept our thanksgiving for your provident love during the COVID pandemic. As you wept at the death of Lazarus, breathe the breath of life everlasting on all those who died from the coronavirus. You have turned our fears into joy, and for this we thank and praise you. To you be glory, now and forever. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we continue our following of the path of our Savior, the path not only of suffering, but a path of healing. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacrament of healing and love. Let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Mm -hmm. 
Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, look with compassion on our weakness and ensure us your protection by stretching forth the right hand of your majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness and the gloom shall become for you like midday. Then the Lord will guide you always and give you plenty even on the parched land. He will renew your strength and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. The ancient ruins shall be rebuilt for your sake, and the foundations from ages past you shall raise up. Repairer of the breach, they shall call you, Restorer of ruined homesteads. If you hold back your foot on the Sabbath from following your own pursuits on my holy day, if you call a Sabbath a delight and the Lord's day honorable, if you honor it by not following your ways, seeking your own interests, or speaking with malice, then you shall delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will nourish you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Incline your ear, O Lord, answer me, for I am afflicted and poor. Keep my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, 
and attend to the sound of my pleading. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the customs post. He said to him, Follow me. And leaving everything behind, he got up and followed him. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him in his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were at table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes complained to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink? with tax collectors and sinners. Jesus said to them in reply, Those who are healthy do not need a physician, but the sick do. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus used in our Gospel passage today an unusual image to refer to himself. And that is the image of a physician. Isang doktor, isang manggagamot. At ginamit ito ni Jesus bilang larawan para ilarawan ang kanyang sarili. Jesus is like a physician who comes to us. And what is the role of a physician? To heal us. And I think, my dear brothers and sisters, as we have been speaking about fasting, abstinence, prayer, and almsgiving for the past days, it is good to be reminded today that all of these things are done not just to make us suffer. All of these are done to make us heal so that healing could come from Jesus, our divine physician. Nitong mga nakaraang araw siguro, ay naririnig natin o ginagawa na natin ang pag-aayuno, fasting, almsgiving, pagbibigay ng tulong sa mga nangangailangan, prayer. Baka yung iba sa inyo ay nagsimula na ng kanilang pilgrimages 
stations of the cross. Pero lahat ng ito ay hindi lang natin ginagawa para pahirapan ang sarili. Ginagawa natin ito para maghilom tayo. Tayo pa namang mga Pilipino, paborito natin ang kwento kapag naghihirap at nagdurusa. No? Parang dyan yata tayo magaling. No? Hindi sapat ang isang stations of the cross lang. Yung iba nga nakakatatlo sa maghapon. No? Hindi sapat na ito lang ang paghirapan ko. Kailangan mas maghirap pa ako. No? Mas masakit, mas maganda. No? Akala nila, kapag mas masakit ang pinagdaraanan at mas naghirap sila, mas kinalulugdan yan ng Diyos. Hindi naman nagtatapos yan sa pagdurusa at paghihirap. Dapat, all of those will lead to healing. If you just end up in suffering and you suffer and suffer without healing, then you just want to hurt yourself. But you do not want to heal yourself. My dear brothers and sisters, it is a good reminder to all of us today that Jesus introduced himself to his disciples as a physician who comes to heal us. All of the suffering that we will undergo in this season of Lent should always lead to healing. And as a physician, we also need to ask our physician, what does he need to heal in us? Nasubukan niyo na ho bang magpa-check up sa doktor? Minsan may nararamdaman tayo. Pagdating sa doktor, nagiging iba ang kanilang diagnosis. Akala mo minsan ganito, no? Iba pala ang nais ipagamot ng doktor sa iyo. Ganyan naman madalas din ang papel ng isang manggagamot o doktor. The doctor or the physician looks at you and he points out to you what you need to heal in your body. And I think it is also the role of God in our lives. Many times, we do not know what we need to heal in ourselves. Akala natin maliit lang yung sugat natin. But deep inside, there is a deeper wound that only God can see and only God can heal. That is why in our first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, it is God who points out to the people of Israel what they need to heal in their society, in their community. You need to remove oppression. You need to bestow bread on the hungry. You need to satisfy the afflicted. All of these things, it was God who pointed out to them. Madalas mga minamahal na kapatid, kinakailangang magtungo natin sa magtungo tayo sa Panginoon. Sapagkat siya hindi lamang ang magpapagaling sa atin, kundi siya ang magtuturo sa atin ano ba ang dapat pagalingin sa iyong sarili. So for the past days, I have been looking at social media and many people are asking, Father, is it enough to ask ourselves this land, what should I give up? Madalas po nakikita niyo yan, tuwing magsisimula ang kwaresma, what should I give up this season of Lent? But I challenge you, to another question. Let us not just ask, 
what should I give up? But let us ask our divine physician, what do you want to heal in me? Panginoon, ano po ba ang nais niyong hilumin sa akin na minsan hindi ko nakikita ang sugat na yan, yun pala nasa loob ko at nasa kalooban ko at yan ang nais mong hilumin. Let us go to Jesus, our divine physician, and ask Him, what does God want to heal in me? Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we commemorate the 37th anniversary of the EDSA People Power Revolution. Pag nakakalimutan ko kung ilang taong anibersaryo, inaalala ko lang kung ilang taon na ako ngayong taon. Because I was born April of 1986. No? Tapos na ang EDSA People Power Revolution. But many times, people are telling those who want to commemorate EDSA, People Power Revolution, and saying to them, move on na kayo. Eh, healing nga eh, healing. So dapat kalimutan na ang EDSA. In order for us to heal, you need to forget EDSA and move on. Masyado kayong nakakulong sa EDSA, People Power Revolution. Kalimutan na si Cardinal Sin. No? Kalimutan na si Cory. No? Kalimutan na lahat yan. No? In order for us to heal. Madalas, mali ang healing na akala natin yan ng magpapagaling sa atin. We need to go to Jesus and ask Him, How do you want to heal us? And many of the things that we needed to heal in 1986 until now are here. Hindi pa ako pinapanganak noong February na yun. No? April ako pinanganak. Kung ano yung problema noon, hanggang ngayon, nandito pa rin. No? Corruption, injustice, fake news. No? 37 na ako di pa rin natin napapagaling yan. Baka kasi, hindi tayo lumalapit kay Jesus. Mali ang nasa isip natin na pagalingin natin. At akala natin gagaling tayo pag kinalimutan natin si Jesus. Kinalimutan natin lahat. Hindi yan ang nais ng ating divine physician. He wants to heal some things that many of us would want to forget. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Eucharist, let us remember that Lent is not just a season of suffering. It should always lead to a season of healing. And we will only heal if we consult Jesus, our divine physician, and ask Him, Lord, What do you want to heal in us? Amen. Please stand. By fasting, Christ came to call sinners, offering them salvation. With humility of spirit, Aware of his call, let us bring our prayers to the Father. For every petition, let us say, Divine Healer, make us whole. Divine Healer, make us whole. That the Church may be seen as the healing home of the weak and the sinful, let us pray to the Lord. Divine, Divine Healer, make, make us whole. whole that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may peace prevail the nations of the world through the mercy that they show to one another, let us pray to the Lord. Divine, Divine healer, healer, make us whole. That unity may grow in our nation 
through the citizens' respect for one another, let us pray to the Lord. Divine, Divine healer, healer, make us whole. That at work and in our families, we may not be fault finders. Let us pray to the Lord. Divine, Divine healer, healer, make us whole. That the dead may experience the saving power of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Divine, Divine healer, healer, make us whole. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions suffered in this Mass. Father, as we look forward to the Savior for mercy, may we participate in His saving action by forgiving those who have sinned against us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise and grant that, cleansed by its working, we may offer minds well-pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, 
but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, the word and my, my soul, soul shall be healed. Be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Nourished with the gift of heavenly life, we pray, O Lord, that what remains for us a mystery in this present life may be for us a help to reach eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Today, as uh, we commemorate the 37th anniversary of the EDSA People Power Revolution in 1986, we will be opening the crypt of the Manila Cathedral for the public so that you can go down and pay our respects to His Eminence Jaime L. Cardinal Sin, who played a very important role in the restoration of our democracy in 1986. He was buried here in 2005. And uh, if you go down to the crypt, wag ho kayong matakot because we will play the the voice of Cardinal Sin. Baka akala nyo nagsasalita si Cardinal Sin pagbaba ninyo. No? So, wag ko kayong magulat at wag kayong matakot. But we will play the voice, the recording of the voice of Cardinal Sin that spoke through Radio Veritas when he called on the people to pray and to support those who are fighting for democracy. And we all know the history that millions of people came to EDSA not only to fight for democracy, but to pray for democracy. And because of prayer, because of prayer, it became a peaceful people power revolution. Nung una ko pong narinig yung recording na yon through Radio Veritas ay kinilabutan ako. Una, dahil hindi ko inabutan yun. At ikalawa, naiimagine ko kung ano ang pakiramdam ng mga tao na noon no? habang pinakikinggan ang boses ni Cardinal Sin, no? assuring them of his prayer and blessing for all of them who at that time were very afraid of what was going on those times. And so as we go down the crypt, let us just maintain an atmosphere of prayer. Of course, you could take pictures, but let us maintain the atmosphere of prayer and let us also offer prayers for our departed archbishops buried underneath the cathedral. There are four of them. Archbishop Michael O'Doherty, he was the last foreigner Archbishop of Manila. He was Irish. And then we have Archbishop Gabriel Reyes, the first Archbishop, Filipino Archbishop of Manila. He came from Calibo in Aklan. We have uh, Rufino Cardinal Santos, the first Filipino Cardinal and the one who rebuilt the Manila Cathedral after the war. He was from Guagua, Pampanga. And then His Eminence, Jaime Cardinal Sin, the hero of EDSA. And so let us pray for them and let us pray that our country may continue our pursuit of truth, justice, and peace. Let us now stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Abide graciously, O Lord, with your people who have touched the sacred mysteries that no dangers may bring affliction to those who trust in you, their protector, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Sweet.